There's talk of Chelsea being potential title contenders. That's what I'm, I'm seeing it all over the timeline. Are Chelsea proving the doubters wrong? Tranquilo, tranquilo. <laughs> Just chill out a little bit. What we're doing, doing our job, getting the three points and then getting on with it. I don't want there to be any noise around Chelsea. This is a side that's had too much noise over the last couple of seasons. And for once, it feels like it settled down a little bit. I think fans were... It was positive to see the owners sitting next to each other at the West Ham game, Egg Barley and Bowley. I think the civil war still continues, but I think they're trying to put an end to it because it doesn't help anyone. And we've talked about it before. When there's unrest in the boardroom, it does bleed onto the pitch and it's hard to get results. But what I've really liked about Chelsea is Enzo, Enzo Moresco. He's been very clear in press conferences and in interviews. I pick out the question from last week where the reporter suggested Chelsea have got too many players and he outlined that Chelsea have got two players in every attacking position. Got Nkunku and Jackson up top. On the left, you've got Sancho um, and you have got... Who else did he say? He said Sancho and... Mudrick? Mudrick. See, I forgot about Mudrick because he's so far down the pecking order. On the right-hand side, you've got Madweki, you've got Neto. In the number 10, you've got Palmer and Jao Felix. And the clarity from the manager just puts everybody at ease. And the fact that you can rotate aside midweek against Barrow, win 5-0 and have Nkunku and Jao Felix in your second team suggests hmm. that Chelsea have got a very, very strong squad. And I think the question for Chelsea is not, are they in the title race? Is can they finish in the top four? Because those are realistic expectations. And based on the evidence of the last few games, there's no reason why Chelsea can't because I think they've got at least either the fourth or fifth best squad in the Premier League. I mean, I mean, we discussed it at the beginning of the season and the kind of talking point there was Chelsea are a mess again. They've got 45 players. How are they going to handle it? And one of the things I said was that if Enzo Moresca can quickly find an 11 or a 14 or a 16 that he likes and stick with that and be brutal with it because of the quality of players they can they have they can be very successful and that's exactly what he's done since then he told Sterling to sling it he's, he's gone to he's gone to Arsenal now and he has basically now found an 11 and subs that he is very very confident with and you look at that team there's just quality all over the place and you say fourth or fifth best squad because Chelsea have pretty much two players in every position, you take out Caicedo, you've got Romeo Lavia. That's a player who I wish City still had, especially with the Rodri injury going on at the moment. True. There's quality everywhere there. That's like the second or third best squad in terms of the actual quality of players in every single position. And he's doing exactly what he needed to do for Chelsea to be successful, which is be strict, have a clear defined strategy, a clear defined team, and obviously look at how you're playing at the moment. I think the Premier League's probably one step too far. It's too early. <laughs> yeah. But top four, absolutely. That five, I've circled it on my uh, in front of me here, is actually outrageously good. And that's without considering the other players you mentioned. Enzo Carcedo, Enzo's still not quite settled, to be fair. Uh, Sancho Palmer and Noni Madoike. Anything can happen on any given day because you've got match winners in various different uh, areas of the pitch. But then on Brighton's side, they haven't lost a game yet this season. They've had difficult games. They've, they've dug in in those games. Xiao Pedro is likely not playing, but they've got Matoma and Minter. Minter's not really like delivered as people expected and Welbeck's in great form as well but they do concede a lot of chances and so I mean I don't know how Welbeck's still doing this by the way I, I thought he was like 43 but he's actually still like 33 mm. uh, he just doesn't age um, but I really think that although we're looking at Chelsea saying potential title contenders Brighton will have something for them because they have something for every team they come up against and this fixture regularly is a good game to watch. Yeah, it's very entertaining. Uh, it's a bit of a grudge match just because of the amount of players that Chelsea and Nick from Brighton as well as their backroom <laughs> staff. Um, but yeah, it's the Brighton team that have impressed this season. Maybe slowed down a little bit in the last few games, drawn their last three Premier League fixtures. Game against Nottingham Forest was a very, very good game. Um, but again, Brighton probably disappointed they didn't hang on to and win. Um, and it's it's a Brighton team that Hurst has got set up very, very effectively. And I think this is a team that relies not just on... Because I think with Brighton, the narrative is, oh, look at the players they bring in and look at how much they change every season, but they can still carry on going. It's the case of relying on the experience that they've got. I think that their spine in the team is still very, very strong. Um, Lewis Dunk has looked better than he has for the last couple of seasons. And like you, said, like you mentioned, Daniel Welbeck's a player that is scoring goals for them this year. So it's going to be a tough task to Chelsea. But for the first time in a long time, I look at this Chelsea team going to a game against Brighton and I think we're better than them. We've got better players than them. Our manager is, is very, very good. And I, I, again, these games can go any way. The one bit that I'll push back on, Kim, in terms of us having the second or third best squad in the Premier League is because 
I can only point to one world-class player in there and I don't even know if he's world-class yet in Cole Palmer. Whereas if you look at a team like Liverpool, they've got four or five world-class players. Look at Arsenal, they've got three or four. City are just littered with world-class players. Whereas Chelsea's players blow hot and cold. Modweki could score a hat-trick against Wolves one week and against Bournemouth look very, very ineffective. And as a result of that, you have to bring players in. And it does work for Chelsea because it's made Maresca's substitutions look like a masterstroke because you've got players chomping at the bit on the bench to come on and make a difference yeah. and affect games. Jao Felix is looking to come on and score goals. Same in Kunku as well and so that worked for Chelsea but say Sancho has a quiet game and Madueke has a quiet game then we're relying on Cole Palmer to deliver some for Chelsea or Nicholas Jackson who like I say can blow hot or cold the, um, uh, I think Pedro Neto earlier this week said when he was at Wolves he knew he'd play 98% of games he's come to Chelsea and now he, he's desperate to make an impression when you were talking about it it actually reminded me of Brendan Rodgers Liverpool team like they had one world class player in Luis Suarez and then other guys who could have world class moments and I look at this front line and I go like all of these guys can do those things. That back line at times is flaky and can sometimes be like Levi Cole, I've really liked in this season, but if Afana struggled a little bit, that reminds me of that Liverpool team. But that Liverpool team did give it a run for the title. And I'm not saying Chelsea are going to win the title, but I'm saying there's nothing to say with Rodri's injury now. And we spoke on a separate video saying Liverpool are now uh, in this sort of dance for the title. Chelsea could be entering that space be purely because of the amount of talent they've got. Yeah, and that, I think that's what I mean. I, that probably not the best squad in terms of individual players, but I think in terms of, apart from maybe Cole Palmer, any one of those players that I'm looking at now gets injured. There's a backup in there who doesn't make the team that much materially worse, if worse at all. Mm. You basically have two first 11s, which are kind of almost as good as each other. And that, through a 38-game season, is obviously something which is, a, which is a really, really huge asset to have. I just think that every individual player on here, I actually like watching. I think you've become a very watchable team. Um, Madueke is just absolutely fantastic when he's on it. Of course, yeah, they can blow hot and cold, but every single player in there has a lot of talent. And you replace them, and there's someone else who comes in who's also got a lot of talent. That Pretty much everyone else in the Premier League, apart from maybe City, Liverpool and Arsenal, would snap your hands off to buy. So I think Chelsea in a really, really good position. N not, as I say, not for the league, but I think definitely, definitely top four. I, I downplay it because I don't want there to be too much pressure right. around Chelsea. But an issue that I've, I've noticed with Chelsea, that Caicedo's come to four and he's playing very, very well. Enzo Fernandez in midfield, I don't necessarily know if he's the solution yet. It's a big shame that Lavia is injured and consistently uh, gets injured because he's a player that, in a double pivot with Caicedo, provides Chelsea that protection where, especially you've got really attacking players that don't really want to go the other way. Um, Caicedo and Lavia in that double pivot works perfectly in my mind. But Enzo Fernandez is going to be the man starting against Brighton and will have to play well because, like we mentioned, Brighton are a very good team. But if I'm looking at this Chelsea side where there is one bit of weakness, it's that midfield. I don't think it's necessarily as solid as I'd like. It's interesting because Brighton also have a similar problem because of injuries. <laughs> mm -hmm. They've been playing Hinshelwood in there and, and Waifu's not really settled in as, as, uh, as I thought he would. And Hinshelwood isn't actually a midfielder. Mm -hmm. So it could be an interesting battle. It might be one where Enzo actually starts to show what he's about because he is pressure resistant. He's just not the best athlete at the moment. Um, score predictions I think it's going to be beautiful chaos this game I really do I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of order but there'll be quite a lot of vibes I think it'll be like a 3-2 a to Chelsea that's not a bad shout I'm going I'm going 3-1 Chelsea I was thinking 3-1 as well I think, I think it'll be a really good game I think there'll be a lot of football played and, and I think it will go back and forth but I think Chelsea will have too much quality